Uh, a very good morning to all. I'm Dr. Chi from the Department of Nursing Science. Thank you very much for joining in this webinar at breakfast at UM Health. Uh, we are very grateful to have Dr. Lai Lili with us in this morning. Uh, Dr. Lai is a senior lecturer from the Department of Nursing Science. She's uh, actively involved in research related to pre-operative care, non-alcoholic fatty liver, press on coplastic, cancer and clinical research. Okay. Uh, as a reminder to all the participants, you may uh, type in your questionnaire in the Q&A icon. Then after the presentation, Dr. Lai will attend to your questionnaire. Okay. Uh, without further delay, please welcome Dr. Lai Lili with her presentation entitled Filling the Gaps in Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease from Screening to Assessment and Treatment. Dr. Lai, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chi. Thank you for the brief introduction about myself. Good morning to all professors, doctors, and the audience. Today, I'm going to present my research finding here. Uh, my research topic is uh, filling the gaps in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease from screening to assessment and treatment. My supervisor is Professor Dr. Chan Wa Kyung, Professor Dr. Sharini Ratna Wetakan from Department of Medicine. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease occur when the fat is deposited in the liver due to the causes other than excessive alcohol use. How frequent is the how common is the NAFOD? The prevalence of nafodi in Asia is as high as in Western, and it is the most common cause of the abnormal liver function test. A type 2 diabetic patient are high risk population for nafodi. About 50 to 70 percent of nafodi was detected by ultrasound. About 20 percent of them was diagnosed to have fibrosis or cirrhosis. Uh, my study is fill up the gap in nafodi, which are listed as below. Uh, first one, non uh, nafodi and type 2 diabetes are increasing worldwide. Uh, there is no local study on severity of nafodi among the patients with type 2 diabetes. Uh, liver biopsy is a goal testing the severity of nafodi, but it is invasive and associated with a small risk, uh, risk of this serious complication. Therefore, a new uh, non invasive test for assessing the severity of nafodi are needed. Uh, number three, no approved treatment for NASH. For new treatment for NASH is much needed. My PhD consists of a uh, research project addressing several important questions on nafodi. Uh, the first project is a screening for nafodi and advanced fibrosis in patients with two diabetes. This study are uh, Objective is to look at the prevalence of nafodi and advanced fibrosis among the patients with type 2 diabetes. My second project is MAC2 binding protein glycosylation isomer as a marker for hepatic fibrosis in patients with nafodi. This study uh, uh, objective is to evaluate the usefulness of serum MAC2 binding protein for the diagnosis of NASH and fibrosis stage in nafodi patients. My third project is a uh, Comparison of control attenuation parameter and HEPA-FET scan for measurement of hepatic stetosis. Uh, this uh, research project is to validate the HEPA-FET scan and to compare it uh, with the CAP for the diagnosis of hepatic stetosis grade in a 40 patient using liver biopsy as standard reference standard, and also to explore the use of sterology analysis of liver biopsy histological section as a reference, uh, as a reference standard. Uh, my last project is a pilot study on MPA glyphosine for the treatment of uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis in patients with type 2 diabetes. This study is to explore whether the short six-month courses of sodium glucose co-transported 2 inhibitor therapy added to the usual care for type 2 diabetes patients with biopsy proven NASH will be beneficial uh, effects, especially on the histological features in NASH. Uh, so all the significant alcohol intakes, drugs that can cause fatty liver, uh, viral hepatitis B and C infection, and other causes of chronic liver disease will be excluded from the study. Data will be analyzed using the SPSS version 23. Continuous variable will be expressed as mean plus minus standard 
duration or medium with interquarter rain and analyze using student T test or meet with new U test where appropriate. Whereas the category variable will be expressed as a percentage and analyzed using chi-square test and facial exact test where appropriate. All studies uh, were approached uh, by UMSC Research uh, Ethic Committee and confirms to the declaration of Helsinki 1975. Uh, let's see project number one. Screening for NALFOD and advanced fibrosis in patients with type 2 diabetes using control attenuation parameter and liver stiffness measurement. Uh, there is a study from Hong Kong show that a large proportion of patients with type 2 diabetes have NAFOD and a substantial proportion of them have advanced fibrosis. 50% of type 2 diabetes patients were found to have NAFOD by using ultrasonography. Uh, there is, uh, has been no local study looking at this uh, prevalence of advanced fibrosis among our patients with type 2 diabetes. FibroScan allows uh, simulations measurement of liver stiffness, which has been shown to correlate well with liver fibrosis. Whereas uh, control attenuation parameter, which has been shown to correlate well with uh, liver stethosis. This is a prospective cross-sectional study of patients with type 2 diabetes seen in diabetes clinic of University Malaya Medical Center, demographic, clinical Anthropometric and biochemical data will be uh, collected using a standard question. All patients underwent fibro scan as a nation. The diagnosis of NAFOD was based on the uh, caps above and equal 263 decibel milliwatts. The diagnosis of advanced fibrosis was based on liver stiffness equal and above 9.6 kilopascal using the M probe or above or equal 9.3 kilopascal using the SL probe. Patients with liver stiffness measurement above uh, or 8 kilopascal were referred to gastroenterology clinic for further assessment, which including liver biopsy. Based on a prevalence of a 50% in previous study, a sample size of uh, 384 subjects was, requi uh, was required to determine the prevalence in the current study with 95% confidence and 5% precision. The factor associated with NAFOD and advanced fibrosis in the patient with type 2 diabetes were analyzed using univariate and multivariate analysis. Uh, a total of about 571 type 2 diabetes patients will be recruited uh, in this study between uh, December 2016 and December 2017. 14 patients were excluded from the study, five of them having significant alcohol intake, five of the patients having unreliable or failed fibroscan examination. The mean age for the population is 61.4, 40.6% of them are male, 71.8% of them are obesity with a BMI 28.2 and waist conference 94.7. So about 79.9 .9 of them having central obesity. The prevalence of the now uh, NAFOD based on FibroScan was 72.4%. On multivariate analysis, we found that obesity and, and a high serial ALT are independent factors associated with the NAFOD. The prevalence of advanced fibrosis based on uh, FibroScan uh, was 21%. On multivariate analysis, uh, we found that high liver ALT, high GGT, and low platelet level are the independent factors associated with advanced fibrosis. 73 patients underwent the liver biopsy. We found that 83.6 of them having NASH, 86.2% of, of them having some degree of fibrosis, and 35.6% of, of them having advanced fibrosis. Uh, this study showed that the prevalence of NAFOD and advanced fibrosis based on the transient elastography is high in patients with type 2 diabetes. The majority of patients with liver stiffness uh, above and equal 8 kilopascal who went to the liver biopsy had NASH and some degree of fibrosis. The finding of our study support uh, the screening of patients with type 2 diabetes or NAFODI. However, the further study are still needed to look into the long-term benefit and cost effective of this approach. And this study finding was uh, published uh, in Journal of Gastroenterology and Hepatology in 2018. Okay, now we move to my project number two, 
MAC2 binding protein glycosylation uh, isomer as a marker for hepatic fibrosis in a patient with nalfoldi. Recently, serum MAC2 binding protein has been uh, found to be significantly evaluated in NASH patient compared with the non-NASH patient, and it has been suggested as a diagnosis tool for NASH. The diagnosis of the NASH uh, is made by the HESP, uh, histopathological examination of a liver biopsy uh, specimen. However, we know that a liver biopsy is an invasive uh, procedure and associated with a small risk of serious complications such as bleeding, and it is poorly uh, accepted by the patient. 220 conservative uh, adults, now 40 patients who have liver biopsy and have stored the serum will be included in this study. Metal binding protein level was measured using a lactin antibody sandwich immunoassay using a semolunacin enzyme immunoassay machine from Japan. The histological examination of liver biopsy specimen was reported according to the non-alcoholic stetosis clinical research network scoring system. The performance of the MAX2 binding protein uh, for estimations of liver inflammation was fibrosis was determined using the area under uh, received operating characteristic uh, curve, which is AUROX. Yeah? AUROX was interpreted as 0 0.9 to 1 excellent, 0 0.8 to 8 is good, 0 0.7 to 8 is fair, and less than 0 0.7 is poor. So data for 22 cases were analyzed in this study uh, with the mean age of 50.1 and 51% of them are men. NASH patient compromised 72.7% uh, of this study populations. 38 healthy control will be included in this study with the, with the mean age 35.2, 18.4 of them are men. Uh, this is the figures about cut-off uh, index for in healthy control and non-NASH patient and NASH patient. Uh, from the study, the means of uh, for cut-off index for healthy control non-NASH patient and NASH patient was 0 0.34, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6 respectively. The cut-off index was significantly higher in the NAFODI patient compared with the healthy control and in the NASH patient compared with the non-NASH patient. And this uh, figure two is a comparis uh, comparison of the cutoff index with the serum ALT, AST, and GGT level for differentiating the NASH from non-NASH among the NAFOD patient. The cutoff point is not better uh, from the ALT, AST, and GGT level for differentiating NASH uh, from non-NASH among the NAFOD patient. The outlook of the cutoff uh, for differentiating NASH from non-NASH among the NAFOD patient was 0.65. So uh, from this study, we can uh, conclude that the serum MAC2 binding protein is a poor marker for differentiating NASH from non-NASH among the Nalfoli patient. This study finding was uh, published in the PLOS1 in 2017. Let's move to my project number three, comparison of control attenuation parameter and HEPA-FEC scan for measurement of hepatic stenosis. The diagnosis of fatty liver usually is made by transabdominal ultrasonography, but the test is uh, operator dependence and with mild fatty liver might be missed uh, during the procedure. An accurate and non-invasive method uh, for quantification of hepatic stetosis is important, not only for the diagnosis, but also for the patient's treatment monitoring. HEPA-FET scan is uh, an MRI-based uh, method for quantification of hepatic stetosis by volumetric uh, fat fraction measurements. All the 40 patients undergoing a liver biopsy at UMMC during the study period will be invited to participate in this study. Ultrasound guided percutaneous liver uh, biopsy was performed using 18 gauge thermal two semi automatic needle. Liver biopsy specimen will be processing using standard laboratory procedures, stand with the hematocylins and eosin stain and mentioned tricon stain. Uh, the specimen will be examined by the, an experienced histopathologist who was guided to this uh, clinical data. The histopathological examination will be reported according to the NAS Clinical Research Network System. 
serology analysis was performed using a serology kits 4.3.2 on image scope from USA. Uh, the data will be analyzed using the grid point count method combined with the death C principle. And this is the serology's uh, uh, point counting uh, features here. Yeah? Uh, a square grid was randomly uh, placed over the slide image and the grid size was adjusted uh, so that the approximately about 200 intersections will be located within the tissue bound, uh, boundary. Every intersection uh, between the tissue boundary was be visualized as I mean to determine whether or not it fell on an area or the boundary of an macrostatosis or microstatosis. All MRI measurements will be made on the 1.5 tes uh, Tesla MRI machine. The processing of MRI data will be performed by the Resonant Health uh, Company in Australia. Patient underwent uh, fibroscan examination for this study, and examination was considered successful if the measurements are valid uh, for 10 or above. If the quarter range over the medium for liver stiffness measurement was less or equal 30%, or liver stiffness measurement was less than 7.1 kilopascal when the IQR over medium was above 30%. Patients who have unsuccessful or unreliable examination with the AIM probe will be examined with the XL probe. A total of 100 patients who fulfill the uh, research criteria will be enrolled in the study. All patients underwent uh, blood checking, MRI, fibroscan, and liver biopsy on the same day. Three patients were excluded from the analysis. One of them uh, couldn't uh, under, uh, undergo MRI due to the glaustrophobia. Uh, One patient failed transient elastography with both uh, the M and XL probe, and one patient have no stetosis on liver biopsy results. Uh, there is 88 patients. Transient elastroglass was performed by M probe, and nine patients were performed by XL probe. There were no adverse event from the liver biopsy, uh, MRI, and transient elastography uh, during the study. 97 patients' data were analyzed with the mean 857s. 44.3 of them are men, 91.8% of them are obese, 95.8% of them having central obesity. The distribution statosis grade based on histo uh, path uh, pathologist assessment was as uh, below 40.2% 40, 40 of them having statosis stage 1, 55.7% of them having statosis stage 2. 4.1% having stetosis stage 3. Uh, this is the scatter plots comparing uh, the fra fraction measurement by MRI and sterology analysis. There was, uh, we found that there was a strong uh, positive correlation between the fat fraction measured by MRI and also by the sterology analysis. Uh, this is the Ben Ottman uh, plot comparing the fat fraction measured by the MRI and the sterology analysis. The mean difference uh, in the fat fraction measured by two techniques was 2.8%, uh, while the upper and the lower 95% limit or agreements was 12.7 and minus 7.1% uh, respectively. This graph showed that uh, acceptable agreements between the two methods since the difference are mostly between 95% confident interval. <clears throat> okay, based on the histological assessment, uh, for uh, the volumetric uh, liver fat fraction for the uh, set of 6, 2 and above, the outlook uh, reading is uh, 0.92%. And where, whereas for the CAP, uh, the outlook is 0.65%. Based on the sterology analysis for the statosis 2 and above, for the volumetric fat fraction is 0.92%. And whereas for the CAP is 063 and based on the sterology for the S3, the volumetric fraction for ROP is 0 0.92 and the CAP is 0 0.68. So from this study, uh, uh, it has provided validation that volumetric fat fractions is excellent and superior to the control attenuation parameter for the diagnosis of hepatic uh, stetosis grade in our body patient using both conventional histopathologist grading, as well as a uh, sterology analysis as a different standard. 
So uh, this study is uh, fully uh, published in the Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology uh, Journal in year 2019. Uh, let's move to my project number four. This is a pilot study on MPAR glyphosine for the treatment of NASH in the patient with type 2 diabetes. Uh, sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor is a novel class of the drug uh, that lower the glucose by including the renal, uh, glu uh, renal glucosuria. SGLT2 inhibitor confer the mul uh, multiple metabolic benefits and improve the cardiovascular outcome in the patient with type 2 diabetes. There is a limited human data on SGLT2 inhibitor for the treatment of NASH. Conservative adult patient above 18 years old with type 2 diabetes and biopsy proven NASH at gastroenterology and hepatology clinic will be considered for inclusion. This study include patient uh, less or equal 65 years old with HbA A1c above or equal 6.5% who were not already on SGLT2 inhibitor, thiazolidine dione or gly glycogon like peptide. Uh, one receptor antagonist. Patient with cirrhosis or chronic liver disease with an estimated uh, glomerular uh, uh, filtration rate less than 45 mL per minute were excluded from the study. Patients who meet the eligible criteria were prescribed between four weeks of liver biopsy and paglyphosine 25 mg uh, for 24 weeks. Demographic Anthropometric clinical and laboratory data were obtained using a standard protocol at the baseline, uh, week 4 and week 24. A repeat liver biopsy will be performed at the end of week 24. In addition, the histological outcome will compare with those uh, of the placebo group of a 48-week clinical trial conducted previously in our centre. All MRI measurements were made uh, on the Siemens uh, Macton area, uh, 1.5 Tesla MRI system using a previous uh, pres uh, described acquisition and processing protocol. The data from this uh, measurement uh, then were processed by the HEPA FET scan by Resonant Health in Australia. HEPA FET scan is an MRI based uh, technology measurement for the volumetric liver uh, fat fraction, will be performed at, at the baseline and the end of week. 24 as a non-invasive uh, measurement of liver stethosis. <clears throat> 78 patients with uh, diabetes underwent liver biopsy for suspected NASH and advanced fibrosis will be recruited in this study. 69 patients were excluded from this study due to did, uh, 12 of them did not have NASH. 33 of the patients did not meet the inclusion criteria. 14 of the, uh, the patients considered for another clinical trial, and 10 of the patients uh, are declined to participate in this study. At last, only nine patients remain in this study. So the mean age for the uh, population in this study is 55. 44.1% uh, of them are men. All patients obese are centrally obese with BMI 30.4 and waist confirmed 105. The distribution of fibrosis stage at the baseline is 11, uh, for uh, fibrosis stage zero is 11%. Uh, fibrosis stage one, 56%. Fibrosis stage two, 11%. Fibrosis uh, 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 stage three, 22%. After six month therapy with MPAR glyphosine, uh, there was significant reduction in BMI, waist conference, uh, diastolic uh, and systolic pressure, fasting blood, uh, blood glucose, total cholesterol, GGT, volumetric uh, liver fat fraction, stethosis, and uh, hepatocyte bloating and fibrosis, but not significant reduction in HPA, A1C. All histology comp uh, components either remain unchanged or improved except one patient who have worsening hepatocyte bloating. Six of the patient experience uh, experienced uh, minor uh, hypoglycemia. All six patients were concomitant insulin uh, therapy. Of the six patients, five patients had their anti-diabetes uh, medication prophylactically reduced upon enrollments. From the study, no patient experienced severe hypoglycemia. None of the patients developed genital urinary infection. 
but one patient uh, experienced uh, pruritus valve, one patient underwent laser protocoagulation for pre-existing retinoplasty. Two patients have cellulitis uh, of the lower limbs that resolve by antibiotic therapy. One patient was diagnosed uh, with a benign ovarian uh, cyst. Uh, these were deemed unrelated to the study drugs. So the result uh, from the study is uh, empa glyphosate result in significantly greater improvement in stetosis, hepatocyte ballooning, fibrosis compared with historic, uh, historical placebo patients. Uh, this is the liver biopsy slide. Yeah, I, I took it uh, before the treatments and after the treatments. Yeah, before the treatment, uh, the, the, the baseline for stetosis is two, lobular inflammation is one, hepatocyte ballooning is one, and patient have NASH with fibrosis one. After six month treatment, uh, we did the repeat biopsy and we found that the stetosis reduced from two to one. Uh, the inflammation uh, remained the same. The ballooning uh, from one uh, becomes zero and from NASH to become non-NASH and fibrosis also reduced from one to zero. So this pilot study provides a primary histological evidence that the MPA glyphosate might be useful for the treatment of NASH. Uh, this uh, uh, study finding were published in the, this uh, Digestive Disease and, and Science uh, in year 2019. Uh, the uh, overall for my uh, study project, I found that the prevalence uh, of NAFODI and advanced fibrosis based on transient elastography is high in patients with type 2 diabetes. The finding of our study supports screening of patients with type 2 for NAFODI. Serum MAT2 finding uh, protein is a poor marker for differentiating NASH uh, from non-NASH among the NAFODI patient. HEPA fat scan is an excellent, is superior to fibro scan and for the diagnosis of hepatic stetosis uh, grade in NAFODI. The MPA glyphosate pilots study provide a primary histological evidence that the MPA glyphosate might be useful for the treatment of NASH. So uh, my PhD study were able to fill up the gap knowledge in NAFODI by providing the data on the prevalence and severity of NAFOD among type 2 diabetes patients, uh, diabetes testing uh, MAC2 binding protein glycosylation isomer as a non invasive test for the NASH, validating the HEPA FET scan for measurement of hepatic stetosis and comparing it uh, with the more validated control adrenal parameter, providing uh, primary uh, histological evidence that MPA glyphosine that, uh, may be useful for the treatment of NASH. Okay, uh, and here I would like uh, to uh, uh, to thanks uh, uh, to take this opportunity to thank the Department of Max, uh, Nursing to give me uh, this slot eh, to uh, for me to present my PhD study finding. I also would like to thank the Department of Medicine. Thank you, Professor, doctors, and the research assistant for their guidance and support for my PhD study, and also thank you for helping me to collect uh, the, uh, to recruit the patient in my study. Uh, a special thanks to Dr. Dr. Nick uh, Mustafa, the head of Department of uh, Pathology uh, from the Sultana Bahia Hospital, as, uh, Alosta, Kedah. Thank you, Dr. Nick, for taught me how to interpret the liver biopsy specimen. I also want to thank Professor Kim from the University of Western Australia and his team from and his research team for resonant health. Uh, uh, from, from Australia. Thank you for taught me how to perform the serology analysis. And uh, I would like to show, uh, to share some of the photo which I took during my PhD study. Yeah, and uh, this picture show that I performing and interpreting the uh, fibro uh, scan for the patient in our uh, gastroenterology and hepatology units. Yeah, uh, I uh, interpret uh, and reporting uh, the HPE uh, report to the head of departments, uh, Dr. Nick, every morning. And uh, this is a resonant health uh, office. I did my serology analysis here. And this is uh, Mr. Ben Greenway and family. Uh, I stay with them uh, uh, during my attachment in Australia. I would like to take, uh, thank them for taking care of me. And with this, I end with my uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any question, you can uh, email me, and this is my email address and my contact number. Uh, with this, I end up my presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to Dr. Lai for your great presentations.
due to time constraints, uh, we are afraid that we can't take in any question right now. Uh, but please feel free to email to Dr. Lai if you have any questions. Okay, with that, I would like to end this session with Happy Nurses Day to all the nurses out there and Selamat Hari Raya Idfitri to all the Muslim friends. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.